Well, yes. Welcome to the uh, sorry, the fifth accelerator <laughs> at least. Uh, overall, PCs. You know, um, we've had this a fair few times. Uh, we've gone around a lot of circles. We've continued to go around circles. Uh, maybe this year we can break the circle and move forward. We'll see. <laughs> uh, no promises yet. But um, so yeah, the basic idea is yeah, we've had this long running. How do we support accelerator technology? upstream like they're like graphics cards graphics drivers a lot or they're like media but how do we move forward and try and actually support them and get drivers in the tree um i have a small agenda if i can figure out how to get this to move to it at the bottom there's yeah, there's oh, yeah. Yeah. This is, but I, I, i'm happy to try and add this or add things these were just topics that came up in a recent discussion um but i think the first one is probably Sort of the, one of the sticking points we've hit a lot is the categorization of well, what is an accelerator and where should that mean it should go in the kernel. Uh, we've sort of broken it down into like I think seven of that talked about it. There's like the, about three. There seems to be about three different categories for accelerators out there. There seems to be what we would call firmware sort of like uh, single shot accelerators. So yeah, somebody just puts some, as a device, they put some firmware in it, they give it a buffer, and they. Hit some registers and it gives them some output and to just do that. And so it's all very programmed directly. There's no queuing. There's no nothing. It, when I look at that category, I sort of think it looks like the way media does stuff. A lot of the stuff in the media subsystem is very similar. It's like it's got, you know you generally have these single shot uh, devices. The problem is I'm not sure how willing the media people are to accept things that aren't directly image related or media related into that subsystem, but I'm more, so not sure whether those type of category devices make sense to be in DRM either. Um, I'd like the media people to, to talk to do to get into figuring that out. I'm going to talk to one or two of them during the week, but I haven't had a chance to catch up with them yet. Um, I'm not sure how political political it is versus sensible, but uh, yeah, just it seems like that's possibly a better framework. They have their memory to memory interface and stuff like that for, the, for devices like that. I'm not against putting this in DRM, but it kind of goes against something we made a push back against a few years ago. I think Daniel can sort of talk to it a bit that we push back on 2D random you know, miscellaneous 2D APIs being in all the drivers because well, there was no standard way to use them, and everyone was just throwing them in, and then maybe using them in Android in corner cases, but no one else was getting any benefit from them. Yeah, they're, they're not useful enough to have a generic 2D user space API, right? But yeah. then they're not generic enough to um, have a kernel API that you'd want to specialize like we do with 3D, I guess. Yeah, so it, they kind of fell into that category as well. So we're you know, got opening up the door to DRM to this, this category of thing, we'll try to reintroduce that side of thing. It's very going to be very bespoke one-off APIs just to prove some firmware and kick some stuff off. But that's category one. Category two is what I sort of term the, what, I think the best example is Habano Labs one that Oda talk about. It's for devices that are sort of single user, but very, uh, what's, the, what's the data center, I suppose, uh, specific. So you're sort of device that you're going to just use them for training neural nets. They don't have like, multi-user, they don't have multiple resources, they don't have, um, yeah, they're just a very specific, they're kind of like, eventually they may want some of those things, but right now it's not where they're at, but, but they're full full single user, you get all the RAM pretty much to the, the one user and they just smash it with training and, and it you know, makes it fast. Um, but they have command queues, they have ability to submit commands and be able to run commands, and they start to look more like our typical graphics driver. DRM driver, except like we have a lot more support for doing you know stuff that they don't want, so multiple users and you know, also the bot thing access. And then finally, we have the range. The late range that I would say is more like a standard GPU is the shared use, multi-user or multiple multiple applications wanting to use it uh, device. They're starting to come in on uh, laptops. You'll see. Um, I think someone called GNA that Intel have on a bunch of chips now, and the Meteor Lake has one called a VPU, the Vision Processing Unit. Um, there's a Qualcomm one that they're trying to drive, put a driver out for. Um, 
I think there's one or two other in that particular category. They are much more like, you know, so like they're like you'd have it on a laptop and you'd want to be able to have your audio processing unit, your camera unit using it, maybe something else. You know, there may be multiple reasons why you'd want to send things through. They need to be like semi, mostly time sliced or, you know, you, you're probably going to send multitasking, but it'll be mostly be probably not at the level of GPUs yet, more sort of a cooperative level. Um, but they generally have, have queuing and stuff. So RAS template. All right, that's redundancy. Reliability. Yeah. Or reliability, yeah. yes, reliability. <laughs> Reliability and service. And service. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of a, what, where, where did all these things need to land? And there's sort of a weird fourth as well. Like that, that MediaTek one is, I think it's an extensible, which just has a bunch of vector instructions piled on. Um, so when they upstreamed the driver, there was also a complete open AMP stack that they compile on the guest side because yeah, it's just a weird DSP, basically, but gets sold as an NPU. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just a weird DSP. Yeah. And yeah, where was that? Where did they, like, is there a place for those to fit in? Is, we never really had a you DSP. I don't, did we ever have a DSP place? Like, I thought, where do we stick DSPs before now? Uh, they used to be in, like, driver's mailbox, I think. Or, like, remote proc is another Yeah, remote thing. proc and stuff. Yeah, MediaTek's not the only one doing repurposing DSPs and calling them. AI ML accelerators either. So there's, yeah. there's a few of these that are that haven't had upstream attempts yet, but yeah, that's sort of where the media tech one landed. Like yeah. to be fair, they did do a good job and post everything and redid it about three times as everyone's like, no, I don't think this is really DRM, let's put it in remote message. Yeah. And it all comes back, it's like, can we make this DRM? So Alex is here, he's the one that redid the media tech driver. And Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I, are we getting to the stage where we just have to put, like, I think the biggest, one of the blockers on doing the DRM is that we have our rule that we want open source user spaces and that seems to, you know, block a lot of efforts. So, um, and the question is, when do we have to enforce that rule and when do we have to you know, decide that maybe there isn't the user space that matters. Um, and there's two pieces to that too. It's not just the user space library stack, it's a compiler, yeah. which makes it especially interesting because that's kind of a dividing line about, you know, when you make decisions about your policy, that's a clear dividing line too. Yeah. yeah. And then they're, and and they're get, gets worse when you even talk about FPGAs because then they also have yeah. Yeah. other well, funds. Well, we, like, well, yeah. we have a system <laughs> for FPGAs and it, it, yeah, it doesn't have a compiler. No, but it has a thing that's like a compiler. <laughs> you can't use I mean, it without it. I mean, we have a subsystem for FPGA. Yes, yes, loads, we do. The, load, the compiler output. Yes. And yes. you don't need to have an open source software. No. Compiler, but, but they're much simpler drivers. Yeah. Which, which subsystem? FPGA. 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 Subsystem, driver FPGA. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, I never knew it was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bunch of drivers to load history. Uh, so like, I suppose the question is, are we got, what objection have we got? Like, are we going to... I'm sort of getting to the, 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 the latter two, the sort of two categories with the, like the about a laptop thing and the AP, VPU, quick call come ones, as long as they've got reasonable user spaces, we're going to have to start merging them. Um, but is, does the Qualcomm one work the same as the Havana one where you like load a squirt in some firmware and then it's your device? No, the Qualcomm one actually has, I'm, I'm afraid, it's, it's sort of like an SRIOV thing, but it's not SRI. <laughs> So at the moment, like, when you can't, you can open the driver, and then you can have it create multiple sub four subdevices or multiple it's subdevices. SIOV. SIOV. No, it's like that, but not. It's just partitioned. Yeah, it's just partitioned. They so have yeah, four partitions. Yeah, they'll give you a partition into it. So they'll create four new DRM devices on the fly. I give you one on each, and then you're meant to pass that through into your. And then everyone gets to have its own firmware. That that's what you know, Joe. I think no. I think the firmware is is still shared. They're just letting them. What they're doing in the district, they're doing inference. Yes. Yeah, that's what it was. We also consider that for our inference of six. We do it in the end. So for those sort of things, I guess yeah. I like the Qualcomm one is good, but they're kind of they're also hitting that like. Is this the way to do it? How do we? How should we move this forward as sub devices? How we should do it? Are we meant to do dynamic sub devices? Is well, this a good idea? A lot of other places do like resource limits. Yeah. Like you have one char device and it has a resource limit built into it. You know, the 
depending on what the, the resource is that you're limiting. But like we see it on some simple RDMA devices, they maybe they can only do a thousand Q pairs or something like that. So we still try to share the Q pairs. But you know, eventually you hit the limit and the device stops being shareable. Four is much lower than a thousand. So, yeah. But it's a really kind of concept. But the problem with like scaling four is, is like they, they keep creating a device node per partition, and we start well, getting. Yeah, you, you don't want to do that because somebody's going to come with sixteen, and then they'll yeah, be at one hundred twenty-eight. Then your model just yeah, it just falls apart. Yeah, it doesn't have a future. <laughs> but I think the problem, like the problem they hit, which we'll probably talk to later in another session, but it's actually in this as well, is that I think they're like, well, we could use C groups for this, and that's why they went and made some devices because there was no way to figure out how to use C groups for it. <laughs> But yeah, so that's the the first sort of overall. Yeah, we need to try one. Like I'm kind of leaning towards uh, politically merging things because yeah. otherwise we're just leaving them sitting in MISC, and then Greg will merge them anyway. <laughs> but at least the two middle categories. I'm still unsure of the first one. I'd like to talk to the media people and convince them that they should do it. That you know, they they also have this, their KCAP stuff. The KCAP will from the media side. KCAM. KCAM. The new camera. Oh, yeah, KCAM. Which is also like yeah. essentially a mm -hmm. fancy processing thing. Uh, yeah, they, well, they have a proposal for KCAM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it's the most loved answer. Um, yeah, I haven't looked at what it, but it, yeah, it's just image processing and streaming it together. So yeah, I think we'll have to talk to them a bit more about the first one. But I'm quite, I think I'm quite happy to start opening the doors. But we have we have enough example ones that they're promised. Like Qualcomm haven't dropped their user space yet, but they have made said they will. And I think Intel are okay too. Um, I thought they have already. No, they they were giving in the last mail in had not had none yet. Um, but yeah, it's probably time just to start merging them and hoping that someone else but does a. Uh, do you want anyone want to be like a sub maintainer to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Always happy to have more maintainers. Uh, yeah. Feel free to approach me and say yes. And you, <laughs> still, you still think they're DRM drivers? I still think they should be. Uh, th th there's so much overlap. It's just kind of well, are we just cutting and pasting for the sake of it after that. Or? You know, I, I'd like to explore that a little because I, I was intrigued by your comment that if it has a command queue, it belongs to DRM. So if you want to go in that direction, uh, but like we have RDMA and DMA engine that both do command queues in either space, so yeah. that can't be the criteria. Obviously, your network cards belong to DRM. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's very clear to me. <laughs> I can put a analog driver in RDMA too. I'm not going. <laughs> but I could do it. Like, I have all the infrastructure to do it. You're just less flexible. I'm much less flexible. <laughs> the, I don't know. But if you, want, if you want to go that direction, though, um, I, obviously you have to qualify it with, you know, if you have a command queue and you're not JSON's hardware, then <laughs> yeah. or, or a DMA. Right? But the, 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 the problem with it is, is where's the line? Like, if we don't put them in DRM and we decide a new subsystem and say some certain company like uh, that John might work for suddenly decides, well, we don't want to make a graphics driver for our chip, even though it's a graphics chip. We want to make an accelerator driver for our chip because it doesn't, we don't care about, you know, we don't actually care about the users. We only care about this very narrow market segment. That, well, you know, I mean, that's, some, that's no different. No, but there, there isn't different. quite a graphics track. And, and, and I'd like to get them into DRM and out of MISC because of that. You know, it's like, where is that line? If we don't, if, if command queues is just an easy line for me to say, but like how much functionality does it need to have to not be in DRM? Because the one thing we have with DRM is we've made like a lot of, rules and people have joined in and we have a lot of companies who've gone through the steps of getting their driver merged like AMD and Intel and now we suddenly go here's a backdoor workaround for people that say we're not a graphics card but we're actually still doing the workloads you do and we're still aiming at the market segments you're aiming at but we're not a graphics card so we don't have to follow any of that years yes, of years of actual will seek to get their stuff working. Yes, people will find the yeah. back doors where you put, leave them open. Like yeah. That's yeah. yeah, and MISC is the back door. Yeah. I'm trying to exactly. shut the MISC back door. And if I have to compromise some of our other things, they're trying to shut it up. Usually the way it works is that the kernel subsystem serves a certain user space to implement some kind of well-defined thing. So from DRM, yeah. I've always felt it's like Vulkan, OpenGL, 
you know, something that draws pixels on the screen. So those right? kinds of things. Yeah. And that always made sense. If you want to implement a Vulkan driver, a GL driver, you're here, DRM, easy done. <laughs> then somebody went and put compute in the graphics card. It wasn't well, my fault. <laughs> but I, mean, I, 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 no, I don't think that changes anything. Like, certainly, you know, for John's case, the Vulkan and the GL, that should be DRM driver, no problem. But we have a model in the kernel now where you, your physical device can work with multiple subsystems. Right? You can have the, the graphics part export through DRM, and you can have the the non-graphics part somewhere else. Oh, there's, a, there's a USB to. connection on the damn chip now. Well, so then, yeah, <laughs> there's USB. It actually wakes up USB. There's so what, yeah, right. what, what, what does it come? What does that look like then? It looks like the DRM, except for a couple of things. You end up with the same interfaces. Like, why? Why? What's the point? And then we have to provide two interfaces to NVIDIA cards and AMD cards. The AMD have already said they don't want to provide another interface because they've done all the work to provide their interface. Right. They actually have a separate compute interface already, and we'd like to back away from that slowly. Oh, so that was they, a bad they, they idea. They did a separate computer interface. Yeah, they did, but we all, we all realized that was one of those yeah. things we shouldn't have let happen, and we yeah. all like to. So AMD have their own um, separate, so they've got a separate IOCTL device node interface yeah. to their compute node. I see. But a driver's myth under here. Yeah, they have a little MISC KFD interface that they've made on the yeah, yeah, the same thing. Way. But they can still do compute work on their normal one. They've just... <laughs> we, we had the same thing happen in our DMA where one of the, one of the vendors made their own chart out like long, long ago inside their, their RDMA driver, same thing. And they said, oh, yeah, this one's faster, so we wanted to use it. They could do all the same work on the slow one, but the other one was faster. Yeah. And... We never got that on. No, like we'd like to unwind that, but it's not going to unwind, but I don't want to keep making that mistake. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. And it's like, well, like if someone was to take the AMD KFD interface and suddenly make a new subsystem saying, this is how you program all these devices, that'd be great. Like, and maybe we could do that, but that interface is not suitable no, no. for that purpose. Well, it's like trying to find what a suitable user space command submission API would look like. It's, I've got one. Right? Yeah, it's called RDMA. It's, made one in RDMA. It's, it's driver actors everywhere. Because yeah. To get the performance, you cannot have generality in any of these paths. That's what we kind of realized. To get the performance, you have to speak in the device's native language at all layers in the stack. Because if you ever do a conversion from general to device to general to device, you're screwed. Your yeah, especially on a work submission path or any sort of. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that one has to be just bare. Bare. There's no doubt about it. Bare. Uh, yeah. yeah, but that's actually the easy part. Um, like it is uh, currently our restriction isn't the yeah, it's command queue, but is that like like these people if you're going to undercut their market segment just by producing something that's a graphics card but pretending it's not, how do we stop? Yeah, how are we? There's no control over that if it's Greg's tree, but at least if it's in our tree, we can say look, eh, don't do that. That's not right. Because <laughs> I know the second I say this, I'm going to have an Nvidia driver in two weeks to put into the tree that will only do one very specific thing, and it'd be like, okay, it's I'm not. A, it's in the constellation. I, I, Personally, have some control over the Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying that's like, what you know. So, you know, if you convince me of something, yeah. there's a reasonable chance we'll go in that direction. But yeah, I, but I also think there'll be other people who aren't in the room who are in the same area. But yeah. then again, is it necessarily a bad thing if a very general piece of hardware gains an open source in tree driver for a slice yes. of what it can do? Yes. I think that's a bad thing. Yes. Because how do we get, decide to load that over to one that's crappy and half working, but does everything? Well, it does something else. It does yeah, it does everything. It does something else. Well, but it may do everything. You mean like the USB? Like how do you how do you decide of which in tree driver to load? Like who's that decision? Like you can't be going out to your customers and saying, hey, well, here's all the drivers, and you pick which one you want to use. It's like you have to be able to recommend. You have to have a setup system. It might work in a data center, but it doesn't work anywhere else because data center they're going to just configure what you tell them. But in the real like laptop world or a desktop. Or, you know. so, so your objection is, is, is we don't have a way to share share the hardware. Why would you want to share the hardware? So I don't get what the point is. Why are you writing a little small driver that only does one vertical? Like it's like, what's the? Because we live in the real world, and it takes man decades to make these drivers. So Why don't you improve the one that's already? Do, there's always one there already. People need to do small steps to make progress. Right? Yeah, but that's a lot of work, isn't? The they, we, they, we divide our driver into three drivers. Yeah. Because of Jason asked, yes. we, we divide it to compute, yeah. Ethernet, yeah. and RDN. Yeah. So we already have three drivers for the same part, for different parts in the same AC. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what I said. We're doing the same yeah. on our driver. We have like six subsystems we connect to for MLX5 now or some crazy thing. Because that's kind of the subsystem that defines the user interface you get. So if you want different things, you need to be in different places. Well, yes, yeah, so we don't have a user space interface for compute. We don't. No. And 
what it would look like. So yeah. we don't have a user space. We don't have a user space interface for computer. There is no standard. There is no yeah. uh, driver specific that I've built everywhere. So I can think what it would look like. No, but even like even a discovery interface, even anything, it's like yeah, there's nothing. There's That's no problem. Yeah. And it's a daunting task because I I mean we counted the API calls the other day and I don't remember what the number was, but it was about two thousand which is too many. Um, and yet, you know, evolution is messy. Yeah. So if you say, well, I want to standardize that, I just kind of laugh nervously and try to hide. <laughs> well, it. Honestly, I don't yeah. think you can standardize the AI. It's not in that phase yet. I can tell you that for every chip, our API has completely changed from user point perspective. Like, from how we submit works to the ASIC, okay? So we keep the same kernel API, but I try, you know, to add a new opcode here, add a new parameter there, but Actually, in the first in the first Gaudi, it was command submission through the kernel manager. In the second Gaudi, it's through it's, it's totally user queues. Ah, but user talks directly with the firmware. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. Well, yeah, we so every chip, it's, it's right. like uh, yeah. there, there is constant evolution here because no but one really knows exactly where this field is going. You can say that, but at the high level, the user is still using PyTorch or TensorFlow yeah, on that, your device. Yeah, and that's the common. That's the common part. Yeah. Like the common part is already made for me. It's PyTorch, it's TensorFlow, yeah. Yeah. Onyx, Cafe, whatever. Right. That's the common part. I only do the, you know, connect that to the ASIC. I mean, that's and that's specialized to my ASIC. Like every ASIC there is different. Yeah, and I think when you talk about a slice, that's that's the slice people are talking about. They want the PyTorch TensorFlow subsystem yeah. that, that does that. Yeah. And that's it, right? And it's tailored to whatever the heck that is. And, there's no standards there beyond this is what PyTorch and TensorFlow do. So it's a wild, wild west. And there's no real standard. Even like they're just hacking crap into the back end of PyTorch and TensorFlow. There's, well, no, yeah. there's no upstreaming. There's very little. It's like, hey, there's our fork of PyTorch. It only runs from the ten year old, five year old PyTorch. You know, it's like maybe we could help that along by having something they can target a bit better. I don't know. Yeah. yeah Does OpenCL fit into the stack anywhere? I mean, yeah, it's just you, another compute user. We don't support basic requirements of what we say that's it. But it is it, made to run PyTorch, right? That's I know, that's why I'm asking is like I'm just wondering if it's building like, like in there because it's supposed to be. I mean that was its mission originally. Yeah. There's something like Open X XLA, I think is the name it's open what? Open XLA. XLA, yeah. That's the name of the compiler. So are you yeah. using that? Are you gonna use it? We are we are going to support it. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> what people are pushing for us. Like uh Internet level where you can have PyTorch, whatever, yeah. you know, it, and then below you have. There are different things, like new things all the time. There is now JAX from Google. They are going uh, to abandon TensorFlow, go to JAX. Like, so good. This field is constantly evolving, and yeah. But, but, but what, what I'm saying, that layer is totally irrelevant to the kernel from my point of view. That like, I work well, versus the one that our custom the user space. <laughs> no, but I work versus the runtime driver that we develop. Yeah, but you're just, you just put layers where they're convenient for you. They're not, you know, they're layers where your company controls it. They're, they're not logical layers. Every company does that. I know, yeah. but that's the has But there's no design to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 there's no design. No, what we're talking about here is like, look at the big picture. There's 100 companies making these AL, TensorFlow, PyTorch, blah, 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 Accelerator. Right. Where, where's the common? Where's where, the where, where's where, where, common? You know what yeah. PyTorch is common. You know, how far down? Or even, yeah, where, where you at least kind of yeah. take the PyTorch guys, you don't need to accept 100 separate user space drivers for, in, that are written 100 different ways and are unmaintainable into your project. Or have an abstraction well, backend where it's just. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the layer. You know? Yeah, but, that's the, well, the, but they, they're not going to live if they do that. We, you know, people know how to do it. 100, I guess probably, and then they'll have a plugin API, and then they'll change the plugin API, and everyone will go, well, my plugin was written five At years ago. Layer, and we don't know. Find out where that is. But it doesn't even have to be common. That's really, I think it's more about. Well, I think what a lot of it does. But well, what a lot of people forget is there's very good value still in having, even if the drivers are very different, but they have a lot of shared sort of things. Having them in the same place with the same style and open source, and not like. I'm putting a driver into the kernel and I'm giving you a binary blob for this chunk between PyTorch and here and not getting any ecosystem around it or developers around it or even any like, here's how you should write this. Here's what to copy from. And if you don't have that like commonality or place to do that, you run into the like, everyone I mean, goes off. And, that, absolutely, it's no argument there. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I think what we've discovered as we talk through this is that a couple of the common layers are PyTorch, PyTorch TensorFlow, and graphics, the graphics stack. Um, I, what, what should you call it? Mesa X Vulcan yes. stack? Mesa stack. Okay, Mesa stack. So those are two areas. I mean, as we're looking for a role here, you know, is, it, is this what DRM does? Um, and pr presumably renamed maybe to something more uh, 2022, right? But if you, is that where you want to go? You want to say, okay, we're, we're going to, we're, we're basically the area that if you support PyTorch and TensorFlow or graphics, then you belong in this subsystem. Yeah, that, that's that's really where that, that would be order. Or even if, even if you support not CUDA, but not you know, not CUDA. The same. Yeah, we don't say CUDA out loud. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, <laughs> the API that could be what CUDA would be for open source. You know, like that. Right. A generic, but a, 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 that's why I say open CL. Yes, yeah. it's kind well, of uh, hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. You can call it a nouveau binding for PyTorch. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's sort of what it is, right? Yeah. That sort of exactly is what it is. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's not all of it. So the thing is, though, if you want to encourage that user space to, how do we do that to happen? But how do we, on the kernel side, do we need that to happen in a separate subsystem? Or is it sticking to your M and sort of trying to point people out? It, it makes a lot of sense if you just say it. Because the, the key to recognizing a, a reasonable design structure is being able to name and describe it in a very short amount of words, right? So if you can say AI, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and graphics, those go in this subsystem. OK, now you're probably on a reasonable path. You better check that getting. Yeah. And then you know, I also usually like to ask people like, what do you share? Like, what do you, what is your PyTorch path sharing with your Vulkan path? Is there any sharing at all, or is it all just driver specific in both, yeah. both cases? In which case you're kind of like. And for like things always going to be the same memory management, just like how you create object, how you do DNA and stuff like that. Yeah, but that that's a little different, right? Because we can share like if you have. Like a, a full feature GPU, you can put the memory management in one place, and you can have the, the DRM subsystem use it, you can have the PyTorch subsystem use it. You, can, mm -hmm. you know, if kids next have networking card ports on them now, you can have the networking subsystem use it. Like, I mean, if you take it to the extreme, like if they have networking, if they have network, real honest to God networking ports on them now. Is yeah. right. At that point, you've got to uplift a whole lot of code out of DRM into somewhere well higher because we, to do you know, memory management, then it, especially you've got video RAM management. You got yeah. Well, some people don't do migration, but some people want migration. What well, we did in Mellanox, it kind of evolved. So we started out with a lot of stuff in networking, and it it isn't networking anymore, like net subsystem, but it still lives there. Like all of our Core chip management that's used by all the six subsystems still is in the networking piece. It just doesn't make any sense that it's there, but it just is there. And so you could probably end up with the same thing where the DRM ends up with all the memory management because that's where it is. That's where it was when it got written. Yeah. But then you plug it in like all the other people just kind of plug in through an API and start using it. That's not unreasonable. It doesn't really seem terrible. Yeah, it seems okay. But I mean, because honestly, memory management is not just something that lives in, in MM. No. Because every single thing manages some bit of memory yeah. somehow. So there's really core MM, and then there's how you're handling it in your subsystem. Well, you that said it right. It's the VRAM. Memory yeah. Management. Yeah. Like you got all that UVM stuff in your driver. It's like yeah. that needs to be not in your driver, but like it's, you know, a lot of that could be common code or code you know, everyone could use in some ways, because a lot of it is just. Use space. I yeah, so, but a lot of that's MM code. Not yeah, I know. No, that's I not actually want to pursue that line of thinking a little bit at some point because there's no MM hooks for you know call into a module and you shut down the MM. All there is is FD hooks, um, the file scripters. And so if you try to build a memory management you know, no, we, extension, we do have a hook for that. It's an MMU notifier. Yeah, you, you just can't use one. That's not it's a sketchy one. Yeah, it's not as, it's not uh, one. Yeah, it's not as oh. good as it should be. I mean, it's, it, yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it really isn't. I mean, if you just add uh, another one, on, I think, on the way down. Uh, yeah, I, there, there was one that we we should have put earlier, if I remember, or under a lock or something. Maybe we're just <laughs> missing one or two notifiers, but it seems maybe that's just a minor point. But it's something that's always bothered me, because I've always felt that MM is not really designed to allow extensions, and yet everyone ends up sort of doing stuff to extend it. Yeah. Well, that, but that belongs in the MM. That's not a DRM problem. Yeah, the guys have to be careful to put their stuff in MM properly yes. and stop 
doing the mistakes. <laughs> TMA. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we've had this conversation with a lot of the pieces. Like, like Christoph was just yelling me about me about DMA buff recently. I was like, no, What's wrong with DMA buff? Well, we're using it wrong. So, so you know, we got to fix the DMA subsystem some more. So that we stop abusing it. It's fine. Okay, we'll do that. But you know, if that's the amazing subsystem work, it's not. Yeah, that's yeah. something that I don't think belongs in DRM. I mean, it's pretty cool that it was created, but it seems like it's misplaced. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not in DRM. It's on the drivers. It's just in drivers. It's not ours. Oh, okay. it's, it's, it's ours in that we wrote it, but it's not oh, ours. Okay. In that. I got it. It's part of the subsystem. Your, uh, email when you said that. It's, I mean, and it's and it's tied to us. As in, and if you start using it and. We think it's being used for bad stuff. It will piss you off because <laughs> I think one of it's one of the best ways well, to explode it, your whole system. The only, the only way run, run you can tell you're a graphics driver because you're using the DMA buff, and that's what I got. Yeah, <laughs> I have a master who's adding it to VFIO and added it to RDMA. That's why you should be on uh, DMA. It's so. on Havana Labs now. <laughs> um, there, there's some interest in adding it to NetDev. which kind of leads down to the second point: which is, is a separate device namespace name needed? Do we need a dev? Do we need Dev Excel or is it so need to be? That's usually where it comes down to. So the, again, PyTorch user space wants to figure out how to open a PyTorch accelerator. Yeah. It where wants, should it search for? It? Yeah, it wants it wants things that are PyTorch accelerators. They, it doesn't want Vulkan drivers. It doesn't want RDMA drivers. Right? So that's usually why you split them. But given the the mess like we talked about in, in that world, I don't know. Like for a lot of devices, like a, like a G, the GPU devices that do compute, it would be the same. Yeah. Their Excel node would be the exact same, pretty much, unless we define some you know new non-file scripter based thing like the KFD stuff did, which is like process based, and it's insane. No, I don't want to do that. No one wants that. That was the mistake. Yes. So I, I'm sort of like yeah, maybe if we go down with the I, the I like the PyTorch TensorFlow stack argument that yeah, maybe we sort of like, you can run these, you can expose the device node and that, and then let the ones that have like the AMD and the Nouveau and you know those sort of drivers that can expose compute on their GPUs do it as well, so it's discoverable. But then we have to figure out how to get a user space. <laughs> no, that's that's the missing piece. Yes, yeah. it's, it's like user space. It makes sense for that. Stated purpose of your subsystem, and I know nothing about that world. I are nothing to say, but does that anyone know anything about that world? I know. No, so the PyTorch and TensorFlow do not open directly the device. Oh, they sit on libraries on top of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think that would change. Anyway. Yeah. If you no, no, but they would open hey, directly. When I started on the, when I started working on this, that was not that was how OpenGL was. And we've spent years making a change. It will change exactly. if we decide we want it to change. Like it's not if we can design, if we come up with an architecture that's going to make a change, it will change. You know, the whole is getting people on board. Yeah, once you set the direction. Yeah, you need to give a direction because you you've got some direction in your company, but you've got you go off in your own way into the woods. Like no one's there going, oh, you should make this work for everyone else because the incentives aren't there yet. But the idea is to try and incentivize the companies to go. To go there's go value in this. There's to go value. Make a yeah, making a layer is actually yeah. valuable. And it is valuable. We know it's valuable. We've done it so many times, but companies don't understand that because they're all trying to get their piece of the pie and secure it and you know well, and a big part of the value is just clarity. Yeah. If you know where something's supposed to go and what it does, then your design follows. Yeah. It's like I need to try to as a driver, it's like build this bit, build this bit, in the kernel build this bit in the user space, and you have a TensorFlow accelerator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, not this whole... Uh, <laughs> it's a great weekend. Yeah, it's a great weekend. There might be a few more blocks hanging out there. <laughs> That's good hand waving, but you know. Yeah, so like, going back to your thing, if you want to separate the right space just for the group, so you want dev access or dev VI, yeah. and it doesn't need to be the one that exposed to be a real IOS tell, it might just be the one that say, um, GPU way. Well, uh, yeah. You talk to me. There's lots of ways to do discovery. Like you could make a discovery in Netlink. We've done that in a few places where you do Netlink stuff and you get a list of what you got mm -hmm. in an inventory of it. And you can translate that to to chart devs. You can translate that to syscalls or whatever. But it, it's, or you can do an inventory in sysfs. Or you know, there's lots of options that don't involve opening. Get yeah, random devices. Random devices and poking off. But having a having a namespace also applies to SysFS as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to Netlink. Yeah, and Netlink if we decide that yeah, there's a Netlink. So it's it's slightly more than just the dev the, the device node. 
Yeah, I think with that, the TensorFlow and stuff, I think it's probably a reasonable thing that we should have something like the SysFS namespace and the, these devices under it. If you're a TensorFlow or PyTorch accelerating device, so maybe that, well, we live, I, that may be then we end up going as our first limit. It just So when you were talking about the other companies, the Qualcomm, the Intel, Right there. You, yeah, so some of the Intel ones aren't that, but they're also very like a G, the graphics device, but I think they'd still fit into this. But I don't, they don't have a user space yet. The other, the other area that's going to be the user space for this is cameras. That's the big, I would say, camera, like camera would want to use accelerator devices for. Well, the other big key I see to having any kind of thing here is you need a point all the companies that here's your user space you have to target. If you're implementing this kernel driver, you yeah. have to put something in that user space project. Mm. And you have to do them both at once, right? That yeah. I think is really important. And defining what that user space project is exporting is really important because otherwise, you go, if you do it wrong, people will want to participate. Right? Like, By the way, I don't want to. devices that do inference usually existing production do not use TensorFlow or Python. Right. You just yeah. write an application. Right. Direct users. So when we talk about Python or TensorFlow, this time we are talking only about training chips mostly. Right. Okay. All those devices, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know how you yeah. like. I don't know if you want the subcategory of training and inference. I don't think it matters. I think those should go together. I mean, I mean whatever. If something's doing training or something's doing inference or both, that if you put them all in the same set of system, it still makes sense. Yeah, to me. I'm sure. Yeah, the it, in it inference is stuff is, is super fragmented. Like every OS, Chrome OS has their own library, Android has their own thing. That's true. Everyone you can else make them has so their small. own thing. And, and obviously they're all layers, so they work over the, the vendor layers, which are all different. Yeah, that seems like a simpler problem to tackle, to make some sort of common project of their own. Than ah, that's what well, in a way, the vendor layers are all different because there's been no place else to do it. Right? If this, I think because inference is simple, like yeah, everyone exactly. loves to reinvent their own yeah. things, so there's even more. So, I mean, if you were to say the inference subsystem, and then, by the way, it can also do PyTorch crap, <laughs> maybe that gives you that like nucleus to put a whole bunch of common structure around. I'm lost. What, what kind of structure, uh, what kind of well, you, like, you, if you need a user it. space where you say, if you make a kernel driver, you're going to have to put something in that user space. And then you need to sell that user space as something useful to the company that's doing all the work. Because they don't wanna, you don't want to sell it as something throwaway. Because then you don't get a. So if they're just doing inference, the they don't want to deal with all the training crap. No, but if you, if you design it right, that can be like optional or, yeah. or separate or something. But if the inference could be a, one of these common APIs that seem to exist, then I don't know where it comes. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, one that pre exists, maybe you could force it to become common. But, uh, I'm not sure whether upstream has an tool for that. It's because other, I uh, think uh, you have know, excellent chances to just even get another API that everyone ignores, or the other ninety-nine percent of the market. <laughs> I mean, this is how spend is always evolved. It starts out fragmented, and somebody gets together in a room and says, "We don't like it that we fragmented. We have a whole bunch of community to agree, and then they put their money behind one of the choices, right?" So, probably right that this little group of people isn't the right people to do that, but. Somebody needs to fire up a, what do they call these things? Image trade association. Say, you know, this is what we're going to do. That's what's worked in other areas before. Um, yeah, but that will kind of mean that for the next 10 or five years, at least this driver's mess key loves to fire. And that's kind of also not great. It's not great. I think we should just focus on the kernel because, like, there is a bunch of people in the AI, like Google, Facebook, Meta. Um, Amazon, maybe mm -hmm. they have like an initiative, but it's perfect now. They're what? They have an initiative to, to work on AI, yeah. you know, common API. So we're just like the open accelerator, beyond that, they have something else in front of the name of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that, it worries me that we're going to jump ahead and then somebody will standardize something, they'll have mm -hmm. third something. It's, it's all about your space. I think we discuss it all about your space. But I think, it, I think it's, it's always valuable to keep moving. Like if we at least get this rolling in a direction and someone does decide to stand us, they may look at this and go, look, there's something to start or use or, you know. Yeah. I'm not super worried if like, the use space yeah, right. yeah, like yeah. OpenGL to Vulcan was a huge shift. They can kill the yeah. No. But it's a, it's a lot of trouble for everyone around, right? To go into all those transitions.
Yeah, I think I think for this as well. So you're going to want to just the standard will be higher. It'll be and they'll have to have a bunch of cost stuff in user space to translate it down anyway. So having a kernel interface and a bit of a user space project to start like because we've had like we have the, the libdrm extraction. It's not really a user space interface, but it's just one step off the kernel, and then you add another. You can actually then mace. You build other things on top of that. You don't just put mace on top of that. But well, maybe that's where yeah. you could start. Say for accelerators, we have a lib, the lib Excel accelerator that's yeah. just like you said, not really useful, but at least it's a place to start. We also have a layer about the kernel, yeah. right? Because I don't want to all the components in my company to you know call IOC, right? I, I want yeah, to yeah. call C-level really functions. This is what they know, and uh, like this is this is a sensible like layer, and and that's that's still it's still evolving. It's a, so for these pipelines, are you going to build it in kernel, like the, the pipeline of like accelerator? Like say for example, you have a camera coming in, right? And then you like like uh, you're working like on the cameras, I mean, like the deep RLC stuff, and it's just like you build a pipeline, right? So is this going to have an in kernel pipeline that has like Plugability or no, I think you still rely on user space to plug all the pieces together with just using DMA buffs or some sort of. Okay, so that's not, not going to be like a, like basically like a pipeline where you're just like inputting stuff at each stage and like no. the I think we'd probably leave that to be more like the uh, G streamer type situation or somewhere. The user space just does it, plugs it together and uses the kernel. Yeah. Like you can pipeline essentially when you, God forbid, use DMA fence, something like that. That's not DMA fence, but yeah, you know, where you end up then. So you know, you you want a situation where you're constantly just waiting on the CPU for something to finish and send the next one. You want to be able to at least have some sort of cascade with it at the lower level. Some device, not all devices, will do it, but we probably do want some sort of like timeline demo for type functionality if we want it. But yeah, it's probably not DMA fence. <laughs> Well, like, DMA fans put the nice version. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the trouble is, like, some of the, the, the soft back, the inference thing is they do actually want to interact with all the other GL and Vin systems. So those do want the fans. Yes, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's the same trouble. But yeah, like the cam, definitely, like, camera capture stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, if you want to put it straight on the screen, you want to have that go through the, the fence. Back. Well, I'm kind of here, and we probably should just do something separate. See how it works out. <laughs> separate, separate namespace, at least, even if it's in DRM. Because I think we, yeah, I think the big thing is moving the things like memory, VRAM management stuff out of DRM is going to be painful. And modularizing it best. Yeah. Well, it was already modular, but we still couldn't figure out how to get it out. Up the layer. Yeah, don't get it out of it. Yeah. Just modularize it a bit so it has some sensible APIs. Yeah. That's. Um. I don't know. Right. RAS. So our RAS is up there. Is really, I can't remember. Never remember what this means. But Reliability yeah. and servicing. So, so RAS is the concept that you have a, a data center and you want you want to understand if your data center is broken, if your servers are working, or when your servers <coughs> fail, what you got to do to fix them, and so forth. So, so this this just seemed like an area that standards would like to have. So you could have <coughs> monitoring systems that don't have to have plugins for every single. There, yeah, there are tons of cluster monitoring systems. Yeah. They plug into all the weird stuff because every, you know, the, every technology has its own metrics for why, when it's happy and unhappy, and I don't think you can really avoid. But the metrics gathering, you could yeah. probably not have to do everyone yeah. differently. Uh, currently, AMD GPU uses SysFS, and they don't have a lot of metrics, right. so they're happy to use SysFS. But Oded's card needs a device I have because he needs way more, like thousands, I think he said, Oded was of counters. And so we've seen every grown up subsystem make a standard way to get. Counters out of your, yeah. out of your devices and your subsystem. Or you may have the way, uh, Ethernet has two different ways or three different ways. Please, yeah. uh, Herein lies the problem. Well, no, I mean, if they have three different ways in the sense that they had an evolution. Yeah, they have so like yes. tool does a bit, SysFS does a small bit, and then Netlinks like yeah, so all of it. It would be nice to be able to run an e tool equivalent and have it report all of your RAS supported GPUs and say error counts or just yeah. basic the, information like that. The modern is Netlink. Yeah, do, do a netlink if you want to do RAS. So do, we should, do your firmware upgrade over netlink. 
I think the other area AMD said was something about writing to EEPROMs they have to do as well that should be standardized. So their RIS stuff must write some values, logs or something out to EEPROMs. <laughs> I have to look at that. Maybe they need upgrading. Yeah, no, it was, it was some, yeah, it's in the RIS area, but he said, yeah, they had some EEPROM programming stuff that they do in the driver now, but they should really not do it in the driver. Well, we have a firmware programming infrastructure in DevLink that's supposed to be shareable across all the kernel things. It's quite nice. It gives you like version controls and a lot of flexibility. I would really strongly encourage anybody that wants to do firmware upgrades, like flash firmware upgrades or EEPROM firmware upgrades, use DevLink firmware yeah. upgrades. Like that's, that's pretty nice stuff. And then you know, I don't think it's been done yet, but we're really hoping that Somebody will write a, a, a firmware update D plugin for the DevLink firmware interface, and then you get the full stack where you can publish firmware to the firmware update D team, and it will flow through and actually get installed yes. automatically, which is like what everybody wants. So I'm, I'm like having a hard time like picturing this, right? Because if you don't build a pipeline in kernel or like have user space set up the pipeline in kernel, right? Um, you're going to hit a problem in the future where, let's say, whether it's C groups or resources or power budgets or whatever, you're going to hit these resource constraints, and then you're going to have user space that's going to be doing like all kinds of magic, where it really belongs in kernel. Like, let's say it wants to start up like two separate acceleration processes, and they use different power budgets, and they use different resources within that, and then each like part of the chain over the pipeline as they have different memory areas that they're using, right? Like this kind of all has to belong in sort of a generalized framework where you can set up this pipeline in kernel in order to do all these things. Otherwise, it's going to be a giant mess that everybody's going to have to maintain. Um, I like the user space. The, the, the thing that you laid out is not logically required to be entirely in kernel. In fact, the more complex you get, the higher up the stack you usually want to go. So if you if you limit yourself to simple mechanisms in the kernel, the complicated ones get built on top. So it, it's okay to have you know you fire up two processes and they've got to communicate and all that. It's okay for users to orchestrate that. Trying to build a, something in kernel to orchestrate that is probably not the right direction. But like let's say for in the future, right, we're getting like these kilowatt you know, boxes, right, that have a constrained power budget, and then you're about to start a pipeline to do something, right? Wouldn't you kind of need that? Like, well, how, will, how will the kernel set a power budget? Like, how do you imagine that work? I mean, like, some sort of common framework where you know, like, what the pieces are, like, consumed, basically. Like, you know, when you define hardware, this defines that energy use. So, I mean, that's, that's your thing. And, you, and what you need is a power budget empty. And you, you pass it around to all the pieces, and the kernel would coordinate behind the scenes. Something like that. That limit. I'm not sure kernel necessarily needs to, like, define up the power budget, but I think it's at least it needs to be forward. Well, yeah. So, yeah. so that we go. You won't get, yeah, stuff won't get scheduled at the wrong time, or someone will take a lock and get preempt on kick in and <laughs> your machine's on fire. Yeah, we, we've all seen that happen. None of our kernel stuff is governed by software in the kernel. It's all governed by hardware or actual physical hardware. It's not going to catch fire. Okay. It might turn off the power. Right, the maker of power. So who in the internal at least knows what budget is and checks it and tells the last user which goes over budget. Sorry, no build process. Sure. Is that on the hardware? That would be great. Well, well you set it up the user space and just yeah. the description. If the user space does the wrong thing, well, you set yourself in the but if doing the wrong thing leads off to turning off the entire accelerator. No, 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 it doesn't. It actually it has a regulator. Yeah, that's that's the that's the emergency shutoff. Like everything has failed, the data center's on fire, I'm gonna turn off my power now. Before you get to that point, some things like I'm gonna reduce the clock frequency by a lot. I'm gonna you know try and keep the thing. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna try and keep the thing operating. But I'm gonna degrade well, its performance. Right, right, but that's still 
allows one user space process to work a bunch of colors. Yeah. So I still think the curl should enforce the image, be aware of what the maximum is, and then the last, basically the last process which tries to make the play with a little bit budget to just tell it no. There are a whole bunch of places on the channel that the user space decides to do something stupid. Like, talks down and all that. Like you have CXL coming, right? So you have, you have a bunch of like you have a bunch of different accelerators, and then they use various different resources. They sometimes can share a single resource between two like two pipeline paths, and then you're going to need like some kind of Scheduler facility or to, arbitrator. Yeah, to ar to arbitrate those things, right? So like like I don't s see how it could even look. I mean. Yes, you're feeding each component, maybe like via uh, KFB, like information, additional information while it's running. But as a major process, I don't see it not being part of the. Well, I mean, the way I mean, the way it works today is is you just you you let pro I mean, process is the element in, in the kernel that handles process resources, right? Yeah. So you fire these off, and then you let the the, the hardware and the firmware handle. Power. So you say, okay, I got a process or a bunch of cooperating processes run, and then the kernel is going to try to schedule these, and then the hardware is going to keep itself running appropriately, whether it's the CPU or GPU or some other accelerated device. They're going to ramp themselves up on on voltage and frequency and, and cooling while there's a heavy workload running, and then they'll ramp down when it's done. Nothing's going to get shut off. It all work fine, and the kernel does what it's supposed to do, which is manage process resource limits. So I don't see a problem to be solved here. I think it's one of those things, depending on what scale of device you're on, it changes. Yeah. So if you get down to like being a, say you've got a camera pipeline, and you've got two block accelerator blocks in the pipeline, but both of them are going to power up and take your machine out, so you're going to power up one at a time, <laughs> with completely separate IP blocks. You want to do that, do that, pass it to the next one. Well, I mean, your, you device, your device is going to regulate its own yeah. power. Well, no, you have to get the devices connected in like so like, like it's not it's not gonna be just a simple one device where you control anymore. Yeah. It's gonna be like multiple pipeline devices. And getting that yeah. But that's I feel like user space will have to really yeah. control yeah. it. I don't think I've just never seen this come up. Yeah. Yeah. I think the kernel pipeline helps much because the user space can still operate each of those devices individually if it wants to. And you yeah. still have to protect against that if you're worried about possible user space. And then yeah, realistically a lot of the entropy you're doing is going to um or Vulcan or come from something like Vaporel as well. Yeah. Um, and you just don't want to be helping many things to be doing with scheduling plenty of those if you can avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Dan wants to say something. Yeah, Dan? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that. I mean, the, the, the PCIe slots that have, have power limits. And like, so you would need to ask, you need to explicitly tell the device you can, you're going to go over your allotted slot power limit budget before you'd have to start managing it. But by default, out of the box, you're not going to be in a situation where one slot's going to Draw so much power, it's going to bring your system down. Like that's that's built into the hardware. Yeah, at least for servers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, like well, like days that I used to have an Android phone where if you turn on the camera and you did something else, the phone would power off because <laughs> yeah. I don't know yeah. the power was <laughs> really broken or something. That's but, neat. <laughs> I think as well, part of the problem is like you don't necessarily. It's not as static as if I put this on, it's going to consume this many milliwatts, right? Right. Like, yeah. If the kernel even knew ahead of time. This workload will consume this much power. That would be really impressive. Yeah, yeah. and a lot, and a lot of these devices are powered yeah. off completely until you use them. And when you use them, they yeah, they have a nice big, big power speak, on. They have a big spike at power on, and then they yeah. steady then, out later. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can't on. really know about. You have to know what the hardware is doing. The right. We are in, in embedded systems. We have this too. With you have a GPU and a couple of clusters, they can't all run at the highest frequency at the same time. You have to make some choices. So that kind of already exists with thermal management. You can just take away the upper frequencies to some of the cores when you have a thermal budget. So the same thing could happen with yet another IP block. Yeah, the, it would run something, would just slow down everything else. Yes, exactly. Wow. Well, the IMX8 yeah. lost the, uh, uh, and the accelerator, the GPU, they have the same cost of it with the device. Or they're actually the same IP block, the GP on the accelerator, the different modes. Yeah. Cool, so I think we've covered the basics. I'm not sure how to move.
Well, well I'd like to go back to you. Uh, have, we, have we come to any sort of consensus on structure and where things go? Because it sounded like we were making progress there. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're kind of sort of converging on we'll put a separate namespace in, but because we've got a lot of stuff in DRM that we want mm -hmm. everyone to re reuse and share code with, we should put the drivers in there, but at least for so let, let's the top two, let the command. Get all the directories. Yeah, I can't write. <laughs> uh, my, my, my handwriting will be less intelligible. <laughs> Like even just from like a, you know, we go, that's what we got, I suppose. I don't even know what the directory structure is now, so it's not going to say much. I always get GPU and DRM mixed up. I have to reverse the order. I think we should like, we should just like GPU. Like drive like driver, Excel, and then GPU, go Excel, and then remove the DRM. That <laughs> well, I mean, that's a big change. We're not yeah, a, historically. We haven't done these major renames in the tree. Every time yeah. people have asked yeah, for that, it's like it's you're, you're going to kill the people doing hard. backporting. Yeah, don't like, do it. Yeah. Drivers GPU charge. Drivers GPU was hard, um, but yeah. that doesn't mean you can't add a new directory someplace. Yeah, or well, another logic replace. Like, but the, yeah, the question was whether we do it in here and we start putting the drivers that are. Not GPUs. Yeah, I would say that yeah, like so the GPU, the first one, the GPU is the one that not confused. Yeah, that, that's the problem. Oh, you can do under GPU, so you can have drivers that's like your DRM. I don't think it matters where you put it. It's, I think, to my mind, DRM means the OpenGL Vulkan. Unfortunately, the problem is that's where all of the code. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? Put another directory, and yeah. they have to use that toolkit. Ah, right, so to put it at the higher level. And just say this is what you have to use. Well, that not stop people. I'm from thinking that they can't use stuff from there. Because in my mind, if I'm in this level above it, I'm like, I'm it's not going to use the stuff. This is what you say is the, you know, the basis yeah. for what you're doing that the subsystem maintainer will enforce. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking uh, you've got GPU DRM display rendering manager. Your graphic stuff goes under there. It's happy. Uh, GPU slash Excel maybe for the new thing. Right. And then you still got, it's right next to you, you can still say, hey, we're still in charge of this, our rules are such and such. So we have a lot, I think what we're going to get to is we already have a bunch of accelerator GPU things in theory, oh, which we could then be moved. We make lots of mistakes. Yes. <laughs> right. We leave yeah, the mistakes um, where they are. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Just that that don't mean what they used to be. I mean, you yeah. could, if you're, it doesn't sound like it's a huge area. Yeah, I got any help. Depends how much you want to offset the back force. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ever move stuff. If, you're, if right. people aren't I'm backporting, they just move. I backport, so I don't move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I haven't tried it, so I, I yeah. don't And then the, the other question is, is do you want to call it Excel, or given what we talked about, this is some sort of PyTorch, oh, oh, Inference oh, AI? Oh, oh, oh. That, that, that comes down to the name. Well, PyTorch is just today's. I mean, it's one of it's one of the Yeah, I'm not saying to call it yeah. AI. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, okay. I'm okay. saying. Calling it Inference seems restrictive as well. AI? Uh, but Excel is too broad because we're not going to put like DMA engines yeah. in there. We're yeah. not going to put um, some of the other stuff I've seen people working on. Machine learning. I mean, uh, would, would ISPs fit in that? I mean, they're not a million miles off. I don't know what ISP is. Yeah, it's a single processor. It doesn't really fit into V4L particularly well. Yeah. Like, that sort of fits in. Well, there's natural language right. processing that doesn't need images, and it still belongs in this area. I'm sorry? Natural language processing. Oh, NLP, right? Yeah, so that, I mean, unfortunately, that's a counter example. So then we get rid of the GPU. Yeah, DRM is now the difficult resource manager. <laughs> yeah, maybe oh, that's hard. It'd be nice if there was a standard or something. You could <laughs> we use no. Well, we made up DRM because we don't have a good name. So well, maybe you need to make up a name for this. Yeah. <laughs> The really difficult resources, especially yeah. I find these that come to find in first work, so I'm trying to do better. <laughs> but yeah, maybe Excel is the wrong thing. Maybe we just need an acronym that's precise, semi meaningless, but semi meaningful, yeah. as it just conveys information. KFC. KFC. Offload engine. Offload engine. Yeah. I could do yeah, offload. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty yeah. loaded yeah. word. Oh my god. Like offload that. means network. Yeah. So the other way, you've got to overload the network. Overload the network. Yeah. 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 Y
they're also <laughs> network the right? yeah. network packet filtering stuff. Yeah, yeah, we don't want those in here. Yeah, they're, they're all yeah. offshore. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That doesn't know how to go in here. What happens if you use a What happens if you use a difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? We already have lots of places to put well, networking things. If they use inference and then they want to hook back out into user space and do stuff and then go back into your offload engine. You know, you want you want me to you want me to hurt your brain here. So so my you know, we're we're going to come out with networking chips that have processors. They're called DPUs. And you know, some of those processors are going to have things that can accelerate inferencing, and you know they're not gonna come out of this subsystem. They're going to come out of another one. Yeah, you need to not do that because that's messing up our. I, yeah, I, they're they're it's too messing much, up our world. They rely on too much networking. It's <laughs> the same the same argument in reverse, right? right? Do you want do you want to import all the networking infrastructure into DRM? No, you don't. No, but uh, there's some common stuff in this general area, and the, the common stuff is we're we're putting pixels on the screen. That's clearly the DRM area. We are doing uh, neural network type processing. Machine learning is usually just yeah. Machine learning. learning it's well, something along those lines that um, it's it's doing things that are AI machine learning. Well, the, and, and those are integrated in with with DRM because a lot of the the origins are the same. It turns out that visual processing and AI are very closely related. Let's just move all the drivers into the top one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's nothing. Like I said, the, the marketing people like to call this accelerated Every computing. Universe, accelerated computing. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, trying to emphasize that there's computing on the other <laughs> side, not just like. Because really what we're talking about is there's some kind of processor that's really weird. It's a specialized computing processor. And then we talked to it. Yeah, fast that's fast. really You could do like A complex. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's on the now. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not Excel comp. It's not Excel. It's not computer. ACMP or something. Just ACMP. Kind of really Go processor. I did not do AC, but that's like uh, AC is way too. It's Skynet trademark. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's excellent. I want Skynet actually. It's synchronous. Call it Skynet. I'm just going to build a community so quickly. You wouldn't want to be on top in control. <laughs> Does anyone work for a company who might object to sending out patches with Skynet in the That's not going to help you repair the network drivers. They don't want to come on board then. Nate, what about NPU? NPU? Network processing unit? Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's really what it's yeah. that mostly is what it's for the that industry. Yeah. Yeah. APU. APU is a lot of we do sign. There's a lot of the upper layer of the NN is Yeah, You have to go past three letters. You think we need more than three letters? More than three. Yeah, we're overloading all the people who have them there. The networking world seems to be different. All the TLAs are here. Yeah. Skynet is trademarked for getting to do for Skynet. Skynet. Skynet isn't bad, but it's probably still not. Skynet? That's application buses. Application buses. Yeah. 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 But I don't actually build these. I've been in these little startups where they, those are things. So. Yeah. Well, that's what this is. We no, are just no. doing application from yeah, just, back in the just day. Just keep writing letters. You got to have more. I'm sorry. <laughs> APU is like the, the mobile phone processor yeah. that runs the application versus one that runs the mode of the other street. Yeah. Well, uh, how about a, a row of wall codes? Some of the networking no, network people say it's a network experiment. I think what created the, the globe or NPU, the first is our old neural processing unit. Neural processing. That, that might be reflecting your Google search history. <laughs> I, I <laughs> okay. The upper layer and, stacks and, are all. I know we have VPUs coming as well. What about NCOMP? That's neural computing. Yeah, but is it all neural? No, yeah, no, it's, no, it's not all. No. So it's. I'd rather go with something that had no meaning rather than something that's too too narrow. Just yeah. Yeah. Of meaning. <laughs> AC, ACP. ACP. What's that? It sounds like there's three P or something, but it's sounds like that. Asynchronous compute process. Oh no, that looks now that you write it down like no, that doesn't look it's too close to ACP. Yeah, 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 it does look too close to ACP. Yeah, tapping it. <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe we should go a little, a little longer. I mean, it's kind of twinning, isn't it? I still like to turn it into a comp. It's okay. Maybe, maybe a compound, maybe a two word phrase is best after all. You know, take two words that make sense and put them together with an underscore and call it good. Yeah, but it's a very long <laughs> yeah, but, but it's a complicated thing we've got yeah, these yeah. days. So what's wrong with Excel? Excel? What's wrong with Excel? Yeah. Excel's yeah. fine, but just add something to it. I mean, Excel, yeah. Excel comp. Like, Excel I think, computing. Or, yeah, like but said, like, Excel is very general. It covers stuff that we have everywhere. And you're like, is it? Yeah, but Jason, you said, like, the next hardware company, you add something, and like, oh, this is a big difference, so we won't go there. We will just put it in oh, some yeah. place. So just put it in MISC. So like, <laughs> <laughs> having Excel isn't that, you know, it's like. No, 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 it's like Microsoft. Excel. I have no problem. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. But it's still, it's still, it's still <laughs> under the URL. <laughs> well, it's a wet well, do we pull it up? Do we pull it up here? But say you must use some of the stuff from. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 We made a mistake. Uh, that yeah. Work. I have no problem. Yeah. And then you get your own device namespace, and you can have your own. I'll give you a major number. <laughs> Which is actually the same thing. If you have a major device number, then you solve all the discovery. And yeah. You keep your system best nodes all in under one. I thought they were all gone. I can yell at everybody at one spot. <laughs> okay. yeah. I haven't felt the need for a major number in a while these days. All the discovery is done magically. No, somebody just took up somebody. They're making systems that took up all the dynamic numbers already, just with the tracing and instruction. So, <laughs> so we we ran out of mis. Yeah, well, yeah, we stopped using mis numbers as well. We do all all, all of the drivers I use do Alec chartouts directly and just get a dynamic chunk. Yeah, I hate that. Don't do that. <laughs> you, you end up always doing it wrong. Well, that's what they all. I thought that was the standard way you were supposed to. You're duplicating a whole lot of boilerplate that almost everybody gets. Is there? So a, that's why the MISC subsystem is there to prevent you from having to do that. MISC is not useful. The way it works, it's dev, struct dev doesn't be useful for most of us. Well, then if you're doing a if you're doing a chart device, you have your own device. You're just duplicating the same one. I mean, no, but you get it in a way that's useful for an actual driver. So you want to have a range of miners associated with the same device. I just want I just want to try it. Numbers. I don't care what they are, what yeah, range the they are. That's it. That's what Miss And I want my own struct device. I want my own struct CDEV. I want it in my own allocation. I don't want it like this. You don't want your own struct. I do. No. I do. You need it. <laughs> CDEV interface is broken. I know. Yes, yeah, so you don't want that. <laughs> I I don't have an alternative. Yeah, yes, we'll make an accelerator subsystem and give it to you the right way. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I mean, it sounds no, it's on the same. But... No, because I'm tired of the race conditions that when people start messing with the raw struct device, it's almost always wrong. That's how you make a subsystem. Again, <laughs> it's always you wrong. Make a subsystem that gives you it as a real device, not a struct device. DRM actually, I mean, you took a long time to get this working right. This is not true. Mm -hmm. And the for Linux has exposed all the problems with I don't know. huge issues with it. So when you try and roll your own, you'll duplicate all those bugs again. Let's put it all in one spot. DRM did a great job with that. So let's not make the same mistake by forcing you to do it on your own again. I would rather see us enhance the driver core and say that everybody has to use one subsystem and Linux is going to become a one subsystem. I, I, I have right. on my to-do list fixed the chart out of the interface for the past 25 years. Nobody's done more. I... If you explain what you'd like fixed, I might well, we have we have try. how many every kernel summit discussed for the past three years we have hundred long email threads of what's broken. Wow. There's a lot broken, but annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the wrong is laid out. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Like yes, right. My point is MIS doesn't have those issues. Yeah. We'll create a subsystem like DRM to solve those problems for you so you don't have to feel like you roll your own. Please don't roll your own. Because I, I like the idea of fixing the character. I mean, maybe I should just go read some old emails. And so, well, the, yeah, the I mean, we're like, making subsystems, right? Like RDMA subsystem, VFIO subsystem, DRM subsystem. You can't make them out of MIST devices. You just, you just can't. It doesn't work. So, remember, char is independent from device. I know. When you start putting them together, I know it breaks.
It's not. We've done it all properly, as far as I'm aware, in the, in the ones that I've looked at. But, uh, but I'm saying that that friction level. I look at the different lengths of DRM has had to go through I know. to make that. Yeah, I'm going to guarantee you've done it wrong, but you just don't care because you probably yeah. never hot on yeah. yeah. one of your devices or raised the user space for an awful lot of time. Right, where's your code? I'll review it. Where's your code? Take your pick. So <laughs> go look at the stuff we just added to VFIO. It's pretty simple. Oh, oh VFIO is good. Yeah, there's the, there's the interaction that gets it wrong. The VFIO dynamically has has raised emissions. We found that. I fixed the whole right. bunch of them. That's in the good. Last but we year. shouldn't have to be doing that for every subsystem. For every subsystem. That's my point. Yeah. So if you so, don't do this, every person who writes an accelerator hardware driver is going to have to reinvent that boilerplate code, get it right, fix it again, if we provide it properly. That's a goal of this, right? So that's, that's a goal of DRM. Let's improve the code. Let's make this work. No, but it's not something you can improve in the current code, code really, because it, you, it's the lifetime of the hardware device structures versus the lifetime of the OS structures. And there's two independent things. You can't really just solve it in the core, because you need the hardware driver. Like maybe you can make a better interface, but I still think there's always going to be that lifetime issue that we always have, that mm -hmm. you've, got, you've got the lifetime of the hardware device and then the lifetime of what user space sees. Yes, and if somebody time. plugs out your hardware device, while you're still using yes. the car device, yes. that and that it's just that's and that layer has to be somewhere. And I don't know if we're depending on where it's core. It. You know, you, there's different approaches. They're complicated. Yeah, but so but we try to the try minimize the number of. But MISC doesn't problem. help you with that problem at all. Yeah, no, so no, no, MISC, no, so MISC is a representation. Mm -hmm. It's a class. Yeah, class is representation of the user space physical side. Yeah. Instruct device and buses are the user are the representation of the hardware side. And that interaction that that. Like blue interaction layer is a pain in the ass when you get it wrong every time. But your Linux has to do it, your MS to do it. MISC ignores it because it's only one side of it. And you have to do the interaction in your own drive. Yes. Right. You don't want to do it. Let's do this in Excel. So DRM is just shared. Uh, is it gonna stay within the GPU or is it coming out of GPU? No, no, we can't move it's stuff because yeah, moving stuff right now. Yeah. I mean, you're just exporting APIs and you call anywhere. We can call all over the place. Yeah, yeah anyway, it's fine. We can even do module namespaces in your which has actually helped the DNA buff stuff out a lot. Yeah. Just by flagging us, oh, you're doing something crazy, let's go redo that. Put a module namespace on there and away we go. And try and help interact. And then we'll work on that interaction between user and hardware. We have this red zone, what needs to be done? Nobody will bring it to, nobody's going to, no hardware companies going to spend the time to do it. No independent companies. Great tragedy we have in the um, maybe for consensus, like on the RAS stuff, because we're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, the consensus is that we use what, Netlink. Yeah, I think we should investigate yeah. Netlink as the, the best answer for that. Uh, there's an answer for firmware and for, for numbers, yeah. statistics. I think I'd probably look at the EEPROM stuff that the AMD brought up. Yeah, the yeah, KVM tried to do generic statistics with kernel, like I rejected, so they just did not kernel. So Netlink, KVM proposes to all. Like it's going to be an optional, like not every accelerator is going to need Yeah, but I, I guess we need there at least a common. bit of standardization yeah. of like, where do you find here of Netlink, rest of yeah. the Netlink schema, as it's called. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Don't use this. No, I'm not some kind of thing. Back away from this. Yeah, sorry. Guys, Don. Look at that. Haven't Raz already standardized on trace events for this stuff? Like Raz Demon consumes trace events, all the uh, machine checks, all that stuff, they come out as trace events. Why are we talking about Netlink for Raz? This is for, well, I suppose it's for Raz for accelerator devices as opposed to Raz for what, everything you else? know, everything, like CPU side or whatever it's being used for other ways. Right, okay. so we, we actually talk in Raz there. Everything that's been described is counters, which is not normally counted as Raz. Yeah. Raz is all about the live event stream telling you something's going wrong. I'm going to ask yeah. like something that happened, ECC error, things like that. Yeah. They want to get a histogram of that over time since the last reset, since the last uh, hints mode. Like, a lot of metrics. Yeah, but how do we, is there a good way of making that? Everyone wants to do the same thing. 
There's no like, there's no. This is one area you can't say our ASIC is specific. There might be a different range, but it's the same process. Like if, yeah, you're plugging it into something higher level anyway, which wants to make sense of it. You're, some, something has to report this into a higher level system. It's like, why is the why can't, is that necessary to be in user space? Is like, if, if you just had a net like the interface. DevOps organizational features Yes, and that's what there's like where the value is. Then you don't have to get everyone to develop their own. And if there's one down the kernel, they'll eventually get to it. They're not going to yes. jump to it tomorrow, but like by having. So I have a question about that because I'm not that familiar with that. Any process can open. Like we have a limitation. We only serve a single process. I want multiple processes to get the events. Possible with nothing? Well, are they events or are they playing like work is counters and, and yeah? And, well, no. I mean, that only gets two parts. You can query and set, and you can also actually get like a synchronous event back. And the way no, not synchronous events. I mean, well, like, information. Like, information. You can query and set, and anybody can query and set. Anybody. Any process. You open a Netlink socket, you go to your group, query and set. And same with the, the ASIC events, it's done like with network multicast, so you can subscribe to the ASIC event class that you want, and then you receive them. And every process that does that receives them. What's the difference between that and the event The event has to be like a simple one. Like event FD is just a counting telephone. That link is an asynchronous notification with a data phone. So, like, it pushes, like, for instance, uh, your RP will change on this entry. And then it multicasts it's all the people listening to that. Your IP address changed or something like that. You say anyone can open that thing, something. Got into an exciting new side channel that security people will shout about as well. Yeah, the usual, like the networking model is, is the they do uh, cap net sys or something, I can't remember, to check for privileged operations. Oh, right, okay. Right, but you can, anyone can open a Netlink socket, so not anyone can execute every operation on it. Oh, uh, gotcha. And does it work from the data? Uh, so that is a nightmare, another one of our nightmares we have. Um, the Netlink sockets are constrained by the network namespace and the process that opens it. However, you can also just ignore that. I say that kind of to see, but that's the way some of the implementations have shaken out is that you know when Netlink went into places that weren't networking, they ignored the namespace because they don't have a namespace. And then the networking site has a namespace, so it's so we need a container. Because a lot of the DevOps, right, the monitoring apps, they just, you know, they deploy a container, they run it, and they, the container terminates. Like, so every, like, one minute. If you're making a subsystem, one of the questions you need to answer very early on is how do you want to interact with in your namespaces? Yeah. Do you want to define your own namespace? Do you want to reuse an existing namespace, it's like networking maybe? Um, it's like a choice you have to make. And if you don't make it at day zero, it becomes almost impossible to go back and fix it um, because it becomes ABI breaking. You know, all your users are using it without a namespace and put it in containers, and they'll suddenly say, "Hey, you, you got that container? Yeah. It's not going to get it anymore." If you get mad at you, uh, so I don't know what you pick for something like this. Uh, it's Ideally, I would want something that can work both outside and inside the container at the same time. Yeah. Yes. Because some people want to do it outside so, the container, some people want to do it inside the container. Saying that I don't want to do namespaces ever is a choice. It's a choice. <laughs> I'm just saying what happens yeah. when you realize. Well, that's Every company that, you know, does it differently. So that may, may also indicate you want your own namespace. I've never created a namespace in Linux. I get the impression it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to work. Uh, but you may want to, because then it's optional. Like if the orchestrator doesn't use your namespace, then it just passes through. If they do use your namespace, then you can um, then you may want a namespace that's a little different. Than, like networking has a very, you're only one namespace at the time kind of model. You might want to. I suppose that's a mess too. It may depend on whether you can figure out if your RAS 
stuff that you publish is a side channel attack. Okay. Could lead to one in the future. If you think it is, then put the namespace in just so later on we can turn it on. <laughs> Any rats event is a side channel. It's a side channel. Because you can always trigger them, even think like ECC errors. So you so. would normally lock them down. Yeah, so you may want to just yeah, think about namespacing it from the start with its own and then hope other people, just so people can go, well, that's your configuration problem. <laughs> Even if you never tell me, is it? Ooh. Later this week, Ant Micro is going to be presenting something. They, they did some kind of like uh, acceleration stuff uh, with RPC message, uh, DMA. Uh, actually, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be tomorrow uh, in the morning. Right? And, uh, basically, we build like, a device. I mean, an EME device. So that's, uh, it's recognized and registered as a standard on EME. So we just throw the data in as you know, like a copy or a or whatever. Uh, and then you can have like a, a custom NVMe instructions that you can use with NVMe CLI. Basically, tell. Uh, uh, you can. <laughs> 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 and there is even uh, a, a follow. I mean, right now it's done, but it's about to, to follow uh, the spec that that the NVMe is working. Yes, with. the computational storage. Yeah. Which, exactly. is a, which is another question about what exactly is the accelerator subsystem? Because uh, computational uh, storage is done in NVMe, yeah. and it can do all this stuff. Too. Yeah, and yeah. basically, it can even do more oh. because it can do things like. If you have like a cluster, you can get data from another NVMe in the cluster without even bothering the, the host system. So it's like that. Uh, and there is one more thing with uh, these tribes and all those custom instructions. You can have accelerators that are tightly coupled with the CPU, and you have there is even a, a, a spec we, we work with that since that I go. A CFU custom function unit that you tightly integrate with the CPU and you have a custom instruction. For now, they are stateless, so pretty simple, but they are about to be. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's your answer, yeah. okay? Go make a computational storage device and you can, you can <laughs> yeah. accelerate it through India. And if somebody wants to dig out their old PowerPC64 and get SPUs running. <laughs> I have really have to I did a lot of work on those. Yeah. <laughs> and people found, oh, I got a couple of extra cycles available on my new new age hard drive called NVMe. I'm going to do this cool stuff. Yeah, that's great. You can go up until you get to like you know five hertz. <laughs> I, mean, I just think it's a dead end. So just leave it where it is. I don't know, but I don't know what that's Some of those NVMe controllers are big, fat server processors. Yeah. They yeah. just pretend to be an NVMe controller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. cool. I mean, in those scenarios, I want to spread data around. Like, if you were processing before you squirt it over your movie network. Again, a yeah. little. Well, a little processing. A little? They're great big server yeah. processors. Oh. So you can put a GPU <laughs> in it. Um, there, uh, Eventually. <laughs> Processing through NVMe computational storage. That is sick and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> I think it's lunchtime. <laughs> I will try and write up some of this in my brain before. Did anybody volunteer for the subsystem? Oh, no. I saw the hand up. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for attending. And, uh, there is another GPU one that's more focused in the next slot if anyone wants to go. It's C groups and user space console. It's two, two separate topics. Thanks for organizing this. No. Did we, did we break?